Hey everyone, PV here and welcome to today's YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to do a walkthrough of the draft that I did at the World Championship. So uh, my draft was covered, right? You can just look at the Twitch VODs from, from the official Magic channel and you will see the official commentary on it. Uh, it was an Innistrad draft. Uh, but I figure since I have my own channel, I might as well just comment and talk about what was going through my mind as I made those picks. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. So in this first pack, uh, there's not that much that is in contention other than the Boral Time and Eden Alive. I think Boral Time is a much better card than Eden Alive. Not much better, but it is better. It is, I think, clearly better. Uh, but Eden Alive is in a better color, right? I think black is the best color in this set alongside blue, but I think black is first. And white is probably the fourth best color in my mind. I would rank the colors as black, blue, then green, then white, red. So I think I would much rather be black than white, but I think Burrow Time is enough better than Eaten Alive that I might as well just take it. And then uh, Falcon Abomination is okay, but I think worse than the, the two removal spells. And uh, it is worth noting that there's a Cease This Storm here. Uh, that is this red card right there, uh, that my table, right? The pack is not very strong, so it probably won't table, but a lot of people don't like that card very much, and I do. So that is something that I, I think you should you should keep in mind. Uh, then next pack, not that much super exciting to go with my first pick. I think green-white is literally the worst color combination of all the color combinations in the format. I can never win with it. But I think, you know, Hound Tamer is so much better than anything else in this pack, right? And Boral Time is splashable. Hunt Tamer isn't really splashable, but Boral Time is. So I could end up in, you know, blue-green splashing, uh, or blue, uh, you know, or green-black splashing white, or I could still end up in green-white, or I could just not play one of my two picks. But like you're not forced to, to commit to whatever pick you already made. And this is something that you're gonna see a lot in this draft, and how I, it is a reflection of how I draft in general. I think I'm a very, um, open drafter. I don't like to force anything. I like to just try to position myself to be in the best colors. And you'll see that I'm going to draft an assortment of colors in this first few packs. Now, this pack is horrible. Uh, the best card in it is the Vampire Socialite, but that is strictly a black-red card. And, it, you know, it's quite good in black-red, but black-red is not a great combination. And uh, I don't have any black or red cards yet, right? So if it was a green-red card or, you know, a, a black-white card, I could at least play one on my first two picks alongside it. This card I certainly won't be able to. Uh, so I just took the flip the switch, which I think is the next best card in the pack, and it's monocolor. And at this point, I'm not really worried about committing to any colors or what. I just want to take the best cards. Right, so I took the flip the switch, which is, I think, a little bit overrated as a card, but still better than anything else here. This fourth pick, um, again, I could just take, you know, Larger Zombie or Pastelin Wolf to just go with one of the cards that I have already. But I think the the Awakener is just a better card than those. And I don't feel committed to any cards. I just want to position myself. I want to be in a spot where if black is flowing, I want to be able to draft it, right? Uh, so I'm going to take the, the Awakener and not know for sure, again, what I'm going to pair it with or if I'm going to play it at all. Now, this pack is interesting because the best card is Flash Taker here, right? I think on a power level alone, the card is extremely good. It is better than Moonrage's Lash, which is the... And, and better with, than Play With Fire, which are, I think the, the two next cards. Siege Zombie is pretty good too, but it is a two-color card, right? And I haven't seen that much white past to me. There is white here, right? There's a Search Party Captain and a Lunark Veteran, so uh, maybe there there is uh, white flowing. But the previous packs just weren't good, right? So the previous packs, saying I saw no white in the previous packs doesn't really mean anything because I didn't see anything, right? I also saw no green and no blue and no red and no black, right? So it, it's not really a very big signal in terms of what people are passing to me or not. Uh, so here the question is, do I want to sort of commit to a two-color card or do I want to take my fifth color, right? Uh, because I don't have any red cards yet. So this would be, uh, you know, the, the, the one of each by pack five, which is never where you want to be exactly. But pick one, pack one, I would definitely take a red card. I don't like first picking a gold card and it's not that good. But here, I think the most likely scenario for me might just be black, white with what I have, especially if I take this flesh taker. So I decided to just bite the bullet and take it because I think it's a powerful enough card. Now this pick, 
Um, nothing is really exciting here. I think Crawl from the Cellar is okay. I'm happy to play one in most of my decks. Some decks want two, so I just took it. And now this pick is uh, pretty interesting to me as well, because I could, again, take the larger zombie or take the Rejuvenator, right? Or even take the Dry's Revival, which I think, or the Celestial Sanctifier, which is not very good, but... Or even the jack o -Lantern. So I could take a variety of things here uh, that, that would be justified, I think. But I chose to take the Seize the Storm. Why did I choose to take that? Because I think it's the highest upside. None of these cards that are in this pack are very important to me. They, they're not cards that are be like, oh my god, I really wish I had that one card that I passed. Why did I pass that? I mean, it's possible that it happens, but it's very unlikely. So what I'm giving up is not much, right? Th there's a chance that none of these cards even make my decks if I'm in this colors. Um, so what I'm giving, I guess Larder Zombie is the best one. But what I'm giving up here is not much. Uh, and since the Storm has a lot of potential, even though I don't have any red cards yet, uh, it is a super strong card if your deck can support it. And I already know that there is a second Seize the Storm that might be coming because I opened one in pack one. So I it, it could be there, right? Uh, so I could uh, have access to two Seize the Storms and then I might just be able to draft a good Seize the Storm deck. Especially because red was sort of flowing, right? We saw two good red cards last back. Obviously no good red before that, but... And red is somewhat of an underrated color, I think, because people just really don't like it, uh, alongside green. So, even though it is the worst color, it's not the worst by enough that you should never draft it. So I took the Seize the Storm as a hedge, right? I think it's the highest upside by a lot, right? So if I do wield the next Seize the Storm, if I do end up with a Seize the Storm deck, it's very good that I made this pick. If I don't, I don't lose that much. So I think this pick was correct. Uh, this pick was also kind of interesting because it is... I think Neonate's Rush is the best card here. Uh, that's the, the zap, right? The one damage to, to a, each thing and you draw a card. But I could end up missing a Ruling Mob if I do draft a black-white deck, right? Because a Ruling Mob... A Ruling Mob is not a very good card, but it is okay in white-black. It can be good in white-black. Uh, so I, the choice is between the, the Mob and the Rush. And obviously, if I'm counting on wheeling the next Seize the Storm then the rushes are going to be a much, much, much better card, right? But right now, I'm more likely to be black-white than anything else. So it's kind of tricky. Uh, here, I think this pick is, it might be one of the hardest picks in the draft. I ended up going for the Neonite Rush, but I couldn't fault you for taking the Unruly Mob. Uh, and just, you know, if you do get the other Sister Storm, you can try to get spells later. Here, I didn't get the other Sister Storm, which is pretty disappointing. So I just took, um, I think, a, a black card here, the Bat Whisper, which is okay in black-white. It's very easy to force through damage early on, especially stuff like Flash Taker, and the token has value. Here, uh, Blood Pact or Brimstone Vandal. I took the Vandal because I don't like Blood Pact that much. Uh, some people said they would have taken Blood Pact instead because you might go black-red spells, which is not really a deck that I've ever drafted. Uh, at this point, I don't feel committed to black at all, though, right? because look at my black cards. They're not good. Right, they're all just mediocre. My best black card is also a white card, right? It's Flash Taker. So it seems unlikely that I'll end up in black red spells, even that it's not really that much of a deck. And I, I I don't know, maybe I should have taken it, but I thought it was more likely that I end up in red X. And in, in normal black red deck, not black red spells, which I've never drafted, I think Winston Veda is just better, right? Than, than the draw two anyway. Uh, here, I mean, I. I took, it doesn't really matter, I just took a random two drop. And I took the Mystic School, which potential fixing, but yeah, outside of that. So you can see here uh, where each player is. And I think in this spot, I'm in pretty good shape, right? My deck is not good. Um, I don't have a lot of good cards at this point. I don't even know what I'm going to be, right? If you look at this, like they, they put my deck as black red, but I don't really have a reason to be red. I have five red cards, but they're not good. Or six red cards, but they're not good. So I'm not actually black red at this point. At this point in my mind, I'm black white. Right? But I could still be anything. Unlikely to be blue, but it could be any combination. I don't feel like I'm in black red. But if you look at the people passing to me, there's like white, white, green. Right? So no one is either black or red. And there's only one other black drafter at the other side of the table, which is Merkel. Right? And I think black is the best color. It's not the deepest color. Blue is deeper. Well, I think black has better cards in general. So I'm, I actually really like my spot here. If you look at this graph, like I think I'm in the perfect position, right? There's only one other red drafter. There's only one other black drafter. And uh, if I do want to be black white, uh, obviously there are two people in white passing to me, 
but I'm still going to get all the white in pack two and then a lot of the black in pack three, right? Because there's no one, like only Andre is white. And so I'm going to get five picks worth of first picks in white cards this pack. So if I do end up being black white, I think I think I'm in a great spot. And if I end up being black red, I'm also in a great spot. So this, this is pretty encouraging, I think, even though my deck is not good at this point. So this pack, back to, uh, I think the best card here is probably Champion of the Parish. I think this card is really strong. There are so many ways to incidentally bump it. And I mean, it's a one drop, right? You don't need much from it. We're like, oh, you know, you don't have that much to grow it. But if it's a one drop that goes to a 3-3, three, three, that's incredible, right? You don't need it to be a 10-10 ten, ten for it to be good. So I think this card is really strong. I don't have anything that goes with it other than Craft for the Seller so far, right? I don't have, I have a flip to switch, I guess, but I, I'm not really in a position to be blue black unless a lot of blue starts flowing, which seems unlikely because it's perceived as the best color, right? And I didn't see any blue. So it, it is unlikely that I'll end up in, in blue black where the champion of the parish really is best because you have so many DK tokens. Uh, so but outside of that, there's the the red 3-4, Firelight Brigand, and Clear Shot. I think Clear Shot is better, right? There's also this cab, but if I'm going to be blue-black, I would prefer taking the Champion of the Parish anyway. So that one is out. The Clear Shot is the other potential pick, but I really haven't seen any green, right? I, I took a, a Hound Tamer, a second pick, and I saw no other green. And I like green. I would want to be green, but I just couldn't justify it. There were no green cards. So I don't really want to be green at this point. I want to be, you know, black, white, I think in my mind is where I'm at because my best cards are in white uh, and, and black just pairs much better with white than red does. And my red just, my red is just bad, right? I, I have six red cards, but I don't really want to play them. So I think I'm most likely to be black, white here. And I think Champion of the Parish is the best pick for that, which is what I took. Uh, here, pick two, this is the, the pining moment, right? Uh, this is the moment where, in my mind, I sort of commit to black white. Uh, I think I could take the that bonus Sprout, for example. I think that card is actually quite good. But, again, I didn't see much green. I'm, I'm expecting to see green in this pack, because I also passed no green. right? But I didn't pass much of anything. The packs were not very strong. But I think this is the moment where I sort of commit to black white. Like, I'm still sort of open. In my mind, right, I can be other things, but I'm also just likely to wheel a reasonable, not likely, but it's possible I wheel a reasonable white card here. Um, I, so I, I decided to just take what I think is the best card that I can play, which is a flash taker. And this gives me a direction, right? So now I have, if, you know, if I am black white, I have seven cards so far. And it's the beginning of pick two, so pack two. So it's not great. Here, pick three, um, nothing is too great. Uh, even the live is pretty good, actually. Uh, but there, there are a bunch of cards that I would be okay playing here, right? The, the Search Party Captain is okay. The Siege Zombie is, I think, pretty good in black-white. Uh, and I do have the, the Champion of the Parish and the Crawl. So this was a, the, the thing that gave me pause the most, right? I just take Siege Zombie or Eaten Alive. But I think Eaten Alive is enough better than Siege Zombie. Eaten Alive is also quite good in black-white because you have all those this, this tokens to sacrifice. So I think I just took the Eaten Alive and I'm hoping that I can get more Siege Zombies later. Um, here again, a tough pick, I think. Olivia's Midnight Ambush is normally much better than Siege Zombie, right? It is a, a levels above. But I'm playing Black White, which is the worst deck, I think, and manipulating day and night. I mean, I guess Blue Black is similarly bad. But there are not that many ways to, to make it night, right? So you're counting on your opponent to make it night. Uh, it's still a two mana minus two mana. It's still, still a good card, right? And if... You know, if you need to kill big things, there's a chance that they, they made a knife for you, and that's why those things are big. Right? And but again, Siege Zombie, there is a lot of synergy with Siege Zombie in my deck and in this colors in particular. So tough, but I think I just I, I just went with the, the better card here, the Midnight Ambush. Uh here, I mean an early mob or the morning patrol, I think both are okay in black white. Um the, the mob is only comparable in black white. But I thought I could get more mobs, maybe, and I have already have, you know, a couple two drops and stuff. So I just took the morning patrol. This might have been a, a bad pick, but uh, here, I mean, the the occultist is pretty okay in my deck, right? I already have one awakener and two flash takers, so I'm happy to take the the two drop that gains me some value. Here, Hurl and Mirror, I really don't like, so I just take another Occultist, and that's a lot of Seize the Storms that uh, we're passing, but not, nothing that I can do about it now. I'm pretty committed to Black White at this point. 
Um, here, I mean, either I take the trick or the lantern. I'm not gonna splash. It's very unlikely I splash anything. I already have a mystic skull. I don't want to play, but I will if I need to splash something. Right? It's not horrendous. Uh, and then if I have the jack o' lantern, that that gives me a better um, avenue to splash something in the future as well. But there's not that much you want to splash in black white. Like black white is a deck that you know usually has a lot of specific color commitments. I have two flash takers already, so it could be devastating to draw like a swamp and a mountain instead of swamp and a plane. Right? And sometimes, a lot of the time, you know, you, you're going to be wanting to cast... I have four black one drops, right? I'm going to want to cast a black one drop and a black two drop, right? So I'm going to need double black and stuff like that. So splashing a color here is is bad. But the Jack lantern is still a reasonable card to just play. Like, I, you can sideboard it in if your your opponent is, is graveyard heavy. So it's still a fine card to pick, but I think uh, the, the flare is a little bit better. Here is another interesting pick. There's the Unruly Mob and the No Way Out. Uh, and people were surprised when I, I took the one at Noe Wild here, uh, which I think is a reasonably better card, even in Black White. People were surprised about this uh, because, you know, I do have a lot. I have like two Occultists already, two Flash Takers, Awakener. So I have an Unruly Mob deck at this point. But I think No Way Out is just an okay card. Uh, people said they thought it was bad and I, I was upset for playing two. Spoiler alert, I have two. Uh, but I think it's just good. It was just good in my deck. It was actually responsible for a lot of my wins in the draft. And I already had the Champion of the Parish and the two Flash Takers and the Awakener. So I have uses for the Zombie, right? So it's almost a three for one at this point. So this card is, I think, just good. I was happy to take it. Uh, but I would have wanted the Unruly Mob as well, right? I would be happy with both of these cards. Uh, here, what is in this back? Not much, I just took a creature here, a, a, a three drop, I think. I would have preferred the Unruly Mob from last pack, but this card is also like, it's not great, but it is playable. So I take another trick here. I take the Lantern if I want to splash something or side it in, but nothing very exciting. So here, uh, now we have a more clear picture of what is happening, right? I'm solidified myself. Uh, I solidified in uh, black white, which is not great because of the developments that happen. Right, because when we last looked at the pod, there were only two black drafters, me and Merkel. And now there are five. Right, there's Deprost, Trotsky, and Sifka also went to black. So this was not a great development for me. And Ikawa, who is passing to me, ended up in white. Right, he wasn't white before. Like before, Strosky was the first white, uh, first person in white. All right, Strosky and Deprost were white and me. Right, but now Ikawa, which is the person that is passing directly to me, decided to go white. So if it was like Merkel that went white, then I would get all the white from Ray Sato, Sifka, and Ikawa, right? But it wasn't, it was Ikawa, so he cut off all the white. So this was not a good development for me. Look, this course are not final. Like, for example, the Pra here in this pot, it's saying he's black-white, but his deck ended up being Naya, right? So this is not super finalized, uh, but I think these are roughly the colors that everyone else is. Like, Yuta ended up being Timur, Andre black-white, Merkel um, blue-black, uh, Ray Sato Timur, Sifka Black Red, but almost mono red. Sifka had like three black cards. Uh, and he was really the only red drafter on the table, right? Because Yuta and Ray Sato were both splashing red. So Sifka had a lot of red cards, uh, which is why he's almost mono red. And Ikawa, I think, was ended up in, in blue white as well. So everything here is correct. Uh, not correct. Everything here is as it ended up being, except for Depra, who became an Aya drafter. So he, he, there's one fear of black traffic, but definitely a much worse position for me here uh, than I was in the previous graph, right? The, the spec two was not, it did not uh, make the table in my favor. But also, even though the pod is not great for me now, uh, I still think I'm in a no case pod because my deck is much better than it was before, right? In pack one, I had not many good cards and no colors. Now I at least have a semblance of my deck and what I'm, I know what I need to find. Right, so I'm, I'm happy being me. I don't know this, right? I'm not looking at this chart as I'm drafting. This is just a coverage thing. So I'm happy if, if in my spot, I'm relatively happy, like I'm okay. Uh, but looking at this, I'm really unhappy. <laughs> here, uh, I mean, not much to take, right? I'm definitely gonna take the Wrath here to Vanquish the Horde. This is a card that is um, very good. But it does get worse because we have deck lists, right? So because since some people are on coverage like me, uh, it, it is only fair to give everyone else's deck list. Otherwise, everyone will know my deck and I would know no one's deck. So deck lists are public here. So everyone is going to know I have a Wrath, which makes it much, much worse. But at the same time, uh, it's really hard to play around this Wrath when you're playing against black-white 
because they just gum up the ground so much and have like these incremental advantages and stuff that you kind of have to overcommit, but you have to play your stuff. Otherwise, they'll just nick and dine you to death, right? So I think even if you know about it, it's still quite good against you. And this Wrath in particular is better than a normal Wrath, I think, because it's so easy to play that plus something else, right? It usually costs two mana or three mana. So if, if it's turn six, you can play a two mana Wrath and a four mana spell, and that's huge, right? Most Wraths cost five mana. So this is not only a wrath, this is a good wrath. So which means I'm, I'm going to take it even if people know about it. And plus the rest of this pack is horrible, right? So it's not even in contention with anything. But even if there was a good card, like a defense rating there, I would still take the wrath. I think it's still going to be better even with open deck lists. Uh, pick two. Uh, here is a, a very interesting pick, again, because I, I think Olivia's Midnight Ambush is a better card than a Static Awakener. It's quite a bit better, I think, on, on my pick list. Uh, it might be the best common for Ana. But this is a very bad Olivia's Mina Ambush deck, right? I don't really have any way of manipulating. I don't have any single uh, day-night card yet, so I cannot make a night for the light of me, life of me. So I'm, I'm hoping my opponent can do that for me. Uh, and there is the, the Awakener there, which is very, very good in my deck, right? Because I have, I already have two Novice Occultists, uh, I have incentives to create tokens because I have the Champion of the Parish and the two Flash Takers. So I want to be a deck where Static Awakener is very good. Like I want to take, you know, the Luminarchs if they come and stuff like that and more Occultus. Right? I want these cards in my deck. So for the final product that I'm envisioning, this is going to be a great Static Awakener deck and not that great if it leaves me Nine Ambush deck. So I took the Awakener here, even though I believe it is the worst card in a vacuum because I think it's better for me. Uh, here, pick three. Um, this is also interesting. Maybe Search Party Captain would have been better here. I took the Shady Traveler. I think that might have been a mistake. I like Shady Traveler a lot, but again, like I only have one card that cares about the Night. That is my previous Olivia's Midnight Ambush, and I don't have a lot of instants, so it's not super likely that I can play the the Shady Traveler past the turn, flip it, and still do something. I don't have abilities, right? You can flip a Static Awakener, for example, with your mana, so you don't have to cast a spell. Like, I go, turn one Awakener, turn two Occultus, turn three Shady Traveler, turn four, flip the Occultus, then I also flip the Shady Traveler, right? So, I think Shady Traveler is a pretty good card. I'm always happy to play it, but I think the Search Party Captain would have been a little bit better here. Again, because of how I'm constructing my deck, I have all these one drops, and I have a bunch of two drops already, so it is likely that I'll, I'll play for three mana or less. Uh, this pack is pretty bad for me. Uh, I don't really want anything in it. Like, you can't really splash Ludovic because it requires blue-blue to flip, right? If it was only one blue, I might. Uh, so I just took the Blade Brand, uh, but I don't even think I want to play it. Uh, here, this pack, that was a, a... Not a steal, but a steal for me. Because the, the Hobbling Zombie is perfect for my deck. Because I have the Champion of the Parish, so it's it's two zombies. Right, uh, that's really good. And I have all the sex support, like I have two Awakeners and two Flesh Takers, so I'm really, really happy to take it as Hobbling Zombie, even though it's not that great a card, right? It's not, um, it's not earlier than it should have, it's not later than it should have been, right? In fact, I'm taking it earlier than normal, but I would just be very happy to just take three more Hobbling Zombies over the course of this draft because it is quite good in my deck. Uh, let's, let's move on. So here I take another, oh, sorry, here I was, <laughs> Uh, my eyes went immediately to the to the No Way You Out, which is a card that I want a second copy of. But, I mean, there's a Foul Play in here, right? And Foul Play is just a premium card. I'm shocked that the, this was the most surprising pick of the draft to me. Like, this is a first pickable card, right? And this is very late. This is pick six. So I'm really happy to take Foul Play here. It's it's better than, I think... I mean, I think it's better than any common, but it might you might take Oracle over it. But it's better than any Black Common. Right? Better than any White Common, I think, for sure. Uh, here I took the Behemoth, which is a card that I don't really like very much, but I mean, I do have a deck that is suited for it, and I thought I might just sideboard it in versus green decks that don't have a good way of killing it, green red decks. Uh, so I took it. Here I took Rotten Reunion, which is a card that I'm okay about playing. Uh, some people, I don't know, hate it, like Siggy, which, which happens to that, uh, he hates it, but I think it's okay. I, I don't mind playing it, and in this deck I think it's actually good. Because, I, again, I have the champion, I have the two awakeners, the two flash takers. And the instant speed is actually pretty important. Because, you know, sometimes you just pump your flash taker or your awakener or your champion at instant speed. 
right? It, it comes out as a surprise. So that's pretty good. And the exiling aspect is also not bad because I do have a somewhat grindy deck. So I expect the games to go somewhat long. Like I have Wrath in my deck. So there will be cards in my opponent's graveyard that I wanted to cut. So I put this in my sideboard originally, but it should have just been in the main. Like this is just a good card. I would have played a second one if I could. Yeah, I, you say I bring it back here. I was like, wait, no, this is actually quite good in my deck. Uh, here, I, I took the the Scarecrow because, you know, it's a four mana card. Uh, and again, I think the hate, hate, uh, hating on their graveyard has value for me here because I do expect uh, the games to go somewhat long and cards to go in the graveyard. Like I have removal, I have this card spells, so I want to be able to hate on people's graveyards. And this gives me a second card to do that. Here, the second No Way Out, I'm pretty happy to play. I think this card is, again, pretty good in general. And I think I don't get anything else here. I mean, I, I take the Elementalist because I have a Seize the Storm. Maybe I'll want to splash both of them. It's unlikely, but yeah, and here there's nothing else. So you see, <laughs> uh, it seems like people are not super happy in general. Uh, this is what I ended up with. So yeah, this is the final colors. So the pro changed into Naya. And Takahashi added two splashes, but other than that, it's the same as the, the previous pick. So, uh, what I submitted, right? I played, uh, this is 24 cards here. Uh, I played this, exactly. Uh, minus two, def minus Flare of Flate and minus Blade Brand, and plus the five drop, the, oh, seven drop, rather, the, what is it called? The, the Lurker, right? The, the seven, six manas that you have to sacrifice something to, to play. Because I thought I was kind of lacking ways to win the game, so I wanted this big creature, and I have fodder for it, right? And I also played the I played the Scarecrow, which is a card that I normally don't like, because I just wanted a creature. I, I don't have that many four drops. It's a reasonably sized creature. It's not great, obviously, but like three four is okay. It's not not embarrassing, right? Uh, and I thought again that um, hating on their graveyard would have value. So I, I thought the card was better than it looked. I think my deck ended up okay. It ended up not great. But I also thought that the table was not good in terms of what we opened. There weren't that many good cards, right? I wasn't really passing anything super strong, right? It wasn't like I, I you know, I, I drafted and then I ended the draft. And I was like, oh, I really should have been red. There was so much red flowing. Or, you know, I can't believe I passed so many good green cards. It just didn't happen, right? So, um... I, my deck wasn't great, but I didn't think anyone's deck would be great. And I think that was kind of true. Uh, I think, you know, Yuda Takahashi's deck was probably the best on the table. It was quite good. He had two ants and he had uh, the 4-4 dragon bomb, right? So I think his deck was, was meaningfully better than mine and better than any other deck. And he ran 0-3, right? He had to run the tables in standard, which is pretty ironic because he had the best deck in the pod, I think. Um, but other than that, I thought my deck was like probably tied for second with like three other decks, right? There were some decks that were meaningfully worse than mine, I think, and a lot of decks that, about half the decks on the pot were about the same power level as mine. So I was okay before I ended up. I expected to go two and one, I think, once I submitted this, but obviously without knowing what people were playing, right? It's possible that there were many good cards and many good decks, just not near me. Uh, so I could be negatively surprised uh, in a spot like this, but I expected to go, you know, more likely 2-1 than any other result, but maybe 1-2. and two. And I did end up going 2-1. Uh, I beat Ray Sato in, in the first match. He was playing Teamer. He had kind of bad draws. I had good draws. Uh, it was it was pretty easy game, all things considered. Um, then I lost to Andre, which was a really, really close game. I think I might have played a little bit bad in, in certain spots, but it came down to him having to top deck a pump spell to kill me the turn before he died. And I think my deck was better than his. Overall, I think my card quality was higher. Uh, he did have better cards. Uh, he had the Morbid Opportunist, which is incredible. And he had the 3-1 the Adversary, the White Adversary, which is also incredible. They're both, I think, better than any card that I have. Right? But the, the rest of my... My deck as a deck, I think, was better than his deck as a deck. I think I got kind of unlucky to lose to him. And then I, I beat uh, Yamaritz Merkel who was playing blue-black. I mean, his deck was okay. He, it was. It seemed better than he was, I think, because he had two of the scabs that bump your zombies and a bunch of zombies. And his deck seemed quite good, two oracles. But in practice, I think it didn't play out that well. I think he did get a bit unlucky versus me as well. He flooded uh, a bit, uh, and but I ended up beating him as well. I think our decks were of similar power levels. Maybe he was a little bit better. 
Didn't mind. So I went two and one. I think I should have realistically beat Ray and beat Andre and lost to Merkel, maybe. Uh, if all things went, you know, according to how the decks look like. So my end result would have been a 2-1 anyway. Just flip them around. If you like my work and want to support me a little bit more, make sure to check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash pvdr, and you can get some extra perks while supporting my work in there. And special thank you to my biggest supporters, Adam Racin, Adrian Camilleri, Foxy, Fernando Vizel, Jian uh, Jian, Igor Petrov, Joey, uh, Juan Chao, Kelvin Peng, Kevin Massey, Lawson, Mattia Giorgini, Nate, Silvia Leticia, Thomas Bocorni, Dimitri. Uh, I really appreciate the support, and I'll see you next video.